Professor Hint. Um, so we start today a brand new series. It's only three in the series. It's quite a short one. Um, and uh, as I said last week, many seem to work on the principle that they are to kind of survive through life. Uh, you know, if I can survive and get through, then that's okay. But that's not God's plan. Not for us just to survive and get through. Um, we are designed, I believe, to thrive. And uh, how do we see life? How do we thrive? How do we um, improve and get better and achieve and so on? It's kind of where we're heading on this series. And uh, we're reading today, sorry the reader's won, for some reason um, I missed out today's reading and I realised it in the week, um, but it is on the service sheet, it is on the screen, so uh, if you take home the, uh, the service sheet you'll have the reading on this. Reminder for the week, it is 1 Peter uh, chapter 1 and we're going to read uh, verses 13 to 17 this morning, it is on page 1217 of our Bibles. We'd encourage you to open the Bible, have it on your lap, read it, and go through it as I go through it this morning. So it's 1 Peter chapter 1, and we're starting at verse 13. Ada's going to read that passage before she does. Uh, we're going to declare what it is that we are reading from this morning. So I hold God's word in my hand. It encourages, corrects, and instructs me. Lord, speak to me now. Lord, speak to me now as we read your word. Mind you, the reader this 1 Peter 1, verses 13 to 17. Therefore, with minds that are alert and fully sober, set your hope on the grace to be brought to you when Jesus Christ is revealed at his coming. As obedient children, do not conform to the evil desires you had when you lived in ignorance. But just as he who called you is holy, so be holy in all you do. For it is written, Be holy, because I am holy. Since you call on a father who judges each person's work impartially, live out your time as foreigners, here in reverent fear. So, uh, as I say, do keep the Bibles open. Uh, that's why we distribute them on a Sunday morning for you to have them there and to uh, check out what it is that I'm saying and reading from uh, and God will speak to you. All right, let's move on then. Last Sunday, you remember I spoke about um, three gardens. The Garden of Eden was how I started and said how in the Garden of Eden, um, God gave us choice. Gave us choice. Uh, he had freedom to choose. And uh, God always gives us choice. Uh, and the truth is, we choose how we live. Uh, it is our choice how we live. And the Bible time and time again says this, that we have a choice in life. Uh, we don't automatically have this to do or that to do. We can choose, and our future really is in our hands. And we can survive, or we can thrive. Um, I read uh, a management expert, Peter Drucker, who once said, the best way to predict the future is to create it best way to predict the future is to create it. Now it's an interesting thought and we kind of say, hmm, is that true? Um, can we actually create the future? Uh, well of course we can, if we think about it. We can create our future by actions and by what we do. Um, for one, choosing Jesus Christ as Saviour at some point in our life changes the trajectory of our life. It chooses, if you like, we choose our future of what we want to do following Jesus. Uh, a couple of other Bible passages just for reference there. There are loads of them. But here's a couple. Galatians 4 and verse 9. 
Uh, how is it that you are turning back to those weak and miserable falsehoods? Do you wish to be enslaved by them over all over again? So again, there are those that are kind of chosen to walk the path of Christ, and they're kind of now choosing to go back. They are choosing to turn away. Uh, Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 8. For you were once in darkness, but now you are the light of the Lord. Live as children of light. And there is kind of a choice there. Once you are in darkness, now you're in the light. Now you're going to choose to keep living in the light. Now whilst some things I know are out of our hands, um, there is a sense that the future we create um, is the future that we make for ourselves. We read about, uh, sorry, I read about a pastor who was um, being inspired by um, Psalm 37 verse 4, uh, which says, Delight yourself in the Lord, and He will give you the desires of your heart. Delight yourself in the Lord, and He will give you the desires of your heart. And so th this pastor sat down one day with pen and paper, and he gave some serious thought to what he really wanted in life? What were the main things that he was really looking for in his life, in his relationship with God? He kind of scribbled out some notes of what he would love to happen in his relationship with God, with his relationship with other people, his friends and his family. What he would really love to happen in his health, in his ministry, in his financial priorities, and so on. And he kind of listed out these things. This is what I would really love to happen in my life. And he says that as he wrote the list, and then he kind of tweaked the list as well, he realised that everything that he was writing down is really what he wanted out of his future life was actually pretty much within his control. He could choose. He could control that so that he could head towards what he was looking for in life. How close, he said, I got to God was my choice. How close my relationship was with God was my choice, not anybody else's. I could choose that. How I treated other people, he said, was my choice. My relationship with people. It was my choice how I approached my ministry and, and how I followed that through. And he realised that actually he had a great control on his own life. And we don't always appreciate that. And he said he, knew, he knows he can't control everything like perhaps aches and pains and so on and that, that kind of area. But he realised that he could again have some control over his health. The way he exercised, what he ate and so on. And so if he wants to be healthier in the future, he knows he has to create that future by doing something about it. He realised that he can't control necessarily uh, how much money comes to him. But he can control how, how he spends that money, and therefore how, how, how the budget works in his own life. If he wants to create a future for himself, which includes perhaps more stability, financial stability, he said, I've got to give more to people, I've got to be more generous, I've got to be watching my money and not just spending it on frivolous things. And that's true of me. And that's true of you. We can actually create our future by the choices that we make. You know, we sometimes um, say things like, well, I don't know what the future holds. Um, who knows what's going to happen? Oh, you know, I'll just see how it pans out. How many of us sometimes think that way? But the reality is that our future is not something that will just arrive without warning and we can just sit back and wait for it to happen. The reality is that our future, to a large degree, will be how we create that future, how we head towards that future. And that's not me saying that, that is the Bible saying it. And really in this short series of, of three about thriving, uh, I guess we're kind of circling around the words of Jesus in John 10, chapter 10, where he says, I have come that they may have life and have it to the 
full, to the fullest and the full. God wants us to actually strive and achieve and, and live life to the full and accept and, and plan for that. And a lot of it is down to how we live, the choices that we make. We are meant to not survive, but to thrive. Uh, again, John chapter 15, verse 11, uh, Jesus saying, I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. The kind of life the Apostle Paul talked about um, is uh, when he says in Romans 8 and 37, no, in all these things you are more than conquerors through him who loved us. So we are achieving, we are striving, we are going forward. And we are thriving. That's what God wants from us. So the next three weeks, we're going to talk about how to thrive in life. And I hope that it kind of speaks into our own situation, your situation, that you can say, hey, how how can I improve? How can I actually thrive uh, this year, next year, and who knows beyond that? But what am I aiming for? And today's message is called Creating a Compelling Future. Creating a Compelling Future. Because the truth is we've already, uh, we are already working at creating our future selves, if you like. We're already doing things today that will affect us tomorrow and the next day. And the Bible clearly says in Galatians 6 and verse 10, a man reaps what he sows. Okay, just checking you all away. So the seeds that we plant today, the things that we do today, the things that we say today, these seeds that we're planting will affect our future. Because what we do today will affect what happens the next day, and the next week, and the next year. We reap what we sow. So let's have a quick look at so this passage in 1 Peter chapter 1. And I want to pick out, again, just three things. A good three-point sermon, I thought. Uh, three things that we need to do to kind of set our future, if you like, in the right place. And uh, the first one is to think it through. To think it through. And I don't think uh, many of us actually really think through where we're headed. We sometimes hear about something or we see someone and wonder, I wonder what they were thinking about when they did that. What made them do that? Sometimes it's a crazy thing. I, I saw a picture the other day, I didn't put it on the screen, I've got a couple of other pictures to put on the screen in a moment, of someone who had tattooed on their back the words, I'm awesome. The trouble is they missed out the E. So they weren't that awesome. <laughs> um, I mean, I, what were you thinking of when you did that? I've got some great little pictures that we kind of might say, what were you thinking of? This first one is... Go on up again. Oh no, that's, that was... Uh, that. Oh, sorry, I'm behind the screen. Right, here we go. <laughs> what were you thinking of? Having those weights and standing on the bouncy ball? Yeah. Do you think that's going to work? <laughs> Another one. What were, how did, how did that even happen in an empty car park? What were you thinking? Perhaps you weren't thinking, you'd get the right most of the time. <laughs> Tattoo glasses on you, of course. What were you thinking about when you had glasses tattooed onto your face? And what happens when you need glasses? That could be very interesting. What were you thinking? Uh, the last one just amused me. You've got to look at the words on the lorry. <laughs> <laughs> on the road to success, there are no shortcuts. Mm. Yeah, what were you thinking when you were going on the road? <laughs> and it's fun to laugh at these things. 
Um, but the truth is that we all have our own. What was I thinking of when I did that or said that? What were you thinking of when you flew off the handle that time and got really aggressive at someone? What were you thinking of when you spent that money that you clearly haven't got in the bank to spend? What were you thinking of when you did that really foolish thing and you hoped no one was looking? What were you really thinking of? And if we are pressed to respond, I suppose the answer might be, well, I guess, I hope no one would notice. Or, well, I didn't think the rules applied to me, so I just did it. Or maybe the main line would be, I guess I really wasn't thinking. And Peter warns us not to make this mistake. Verse 13 of 1 Peter uh, chapter 1. Therefore prepare your minds for action. Be self-controlled. You see that, that little nutshell there? Prepare your minds for action and be self-controlled. He's saying, before you follow through, think it through. And then he continues, to set your hope fully on the grace to be given you when Jesus Christ is revealed. Think it through. Think it through. Not just assume something might happen. Not say, well, I can't really be bothered. I'll just sit down and and let it all happen at some point. Think it through, prepare your mind for action. He's saying don't just think about the now, but think about the future. Think about the consequences. Think about where you're actually heading. Think about the big picture. Think about where our life is going and what God has promised to accomplish through you. And most importantly, think about what you'll be, not what you were. So many people kind of go, well, I did that but it didn't work. I didn't achieve then. Or I'm only a now. We've got to think through what we are heading for, where we are going. Reap we, will, we reap what we sow. So before we sow, we have to think it through. Because if that's true, and the Bible is true, I believe, it's saying what, what, you, what you reap down the line is what you sow today. So you've got to think about what you're sowing. If any farmer has a field and just goes, I'm just going to throw some seeds in the air and hopefully something comes up. Uh, he's got to think it through. He's got to think through. What is my crop this year? What am I going to put in this field? What's it prepared for? And I'm going to sow it. And so in a few months' time, I'm going to get this out of it. And the Bible talks about reaping and sowing a lot. And it's saying, in our lives, we've got to think about what we are sowing now. Think it through. So that you achieve something in the future. The second thing we want to see out of this passage when it comes to our future is we need to raise the bar. You know, if, if you look on um, labels on, on food and so on, uh, I was looking at some at home yesterday, uh, but particularly the nutrition ones, and it kind of lists the minimum daily requirement for our vitamins and so on. It says, you know, how much vitamin C you should have and how much iron you should have and how much zinc and all those things kind of thing. Now, this is the minimum requirement. We're going to go, okay, I've got to try and get to the minimum requirement. I've got to try and get that vitamin C in me. I've got to try and have my, you know, five a day or whatever so that I get these things in me and I get the minimum. So we often go for the minimum. As long as we've got the minimum, we're okay. But that's not how the Bible works. When we are going to succeed, when we are going to achieve, achieve, when we're going to thrive, we need to set the bar higher than the minimum. We chart our success so often with those around us. And you know how often we look around us and try and find someone that is not achieving as much as us. And we go, oh, well, I'm not. 
I wonder how many of you have heard someone say, I'm not a bad person, I haven't killed anyone. Really, that's your level? If you haven't killed anyone, you're not a bad person? Um, that's, that's your achievement? That's an interesting bar to set, isn't it? As long as they've taken a human life, they are convinced they're okay. Or uh, some people have set the bar a little bit higher and they say, well, I'm a good person because I pay my taxes. Well, that's all right then. That's fine. That's your minimum. You, you set that. That's all right. You know, the rest of life is, is fine. Others will raise the bar a little bit higher than that and they say, I, I'm a good person. I, I, I help my neighbor sometimes. I go to church. I'm a good person, and that's that, their kind of minimum. They kind of set it at that, they thought, well, at least I'm doing that. And that's how people go through life. And Peter challenges us to raise the bar. Increase the minimum you'll accept from yourself. Set a new standard. Look at verse 14 and 15. Where he says, as obedient children, do not conform to the evil desires you had when you lived in your ignorance. But don't go up looking back and going, well, well I've actually achieved a little bit more since then. Praise the bar. He says, verse 15, but just as he who called you is holy, now here's a big buffing of the bar. So be holy in all you do. Oh dear, that's not the minimum, is it? Raise the bar. And all right, we can't necessarily raise the bar way up there to start with. So what do you do when, you know, if you're learning to high jump? I don't know why I'm explaining this, because I'm not a high jumper. But anyway, if you're learning to, you know, you don't go, oh, well, I'm going to put it at six foot first time. No, you want to get that high, maybe. You'd love to achieve, I don't know what the, you know, the high jump standard is now, but you know what I'm saying. And you start down here, but at least you raise the bar. Yeah, I can get over that, that's good. Now, next practice, I'm going to go another 10 mil higher. And you raise the bar, and you're always wanting to achieve, so you just go up a little bit more. And so we need to raise the bar in life. If we're going to thrive and not just survive, we need to be constantly raising the bar. And you might say, well, how do I do that? Well, you know, I can give you a few examples, but really you need to work it out for yourself. But I could say things like, well, what about raising the bar by saying, this week in my prayer time, I'm going to pray five minutes longer than I did last week. I'm going to spend more time with the Lord this week than I did with him last week. That's raising the bar. And also you're going towards what Peter says about being holy. So raise the bar a bit. I've done my minimum last week, you know, I was praying for so-and-so for, for that long. Well, this week I'm going to raise the bar and I'm going to extend it. Or I'm going to encourage my family more. I know I'm not a great encourager and I sometimes say a few nice kind words to people, but this week, this coming week, I'm going to raise the bar and I'm going to just really make an effort to say something nice. Or I'm going to spend five minutes longer in exercise than I did last week. That may actually be only five minutes. But, <laughs> but you know what I mean? I, that I want to need to look after my health because my body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. I need to be active and so on, so I'm going to raise the bar. So this week I'm going to do just a few minutes more in exercise. I'm going to walk up the shop or I'm going to, you know, whatever it is. I'm going to raise the bar. And raising the bar, even if it's a little bit at first, can create a new minimum, if you like. Lifting it up. And it really can make a difference. And we saw the standard being set in the end, and that is, be holy, says the Lord, because I am holy. And we know that we're never going to be 100% pure. We know we're never going to be 100% sinless because only the Lord is. But it doesn't mean we've got to go, oh well. The Bible encourages constantly to achieve, to raise the bar, to get better, to follow Jesus more. Third thing. So we're on the final stretch. The third thing, and that is to act on it. To act on it. 
When it comes to our future, good intentions aren't good enough to get us to where we want to achieve. You know, we are not saved by good works. That clearly says in the Bible, you are saved by faith and not by good works. That's true. But see what Peter says here in verse 17. And remember that your heavenly Father to whom you pray has no favourites. He will judge or reward according but to what you do. So it's not just faith. Not in the sense of putting my trust in Jesus and then sitting back. He will judge and reward you according to what you do. And this is not a one-off passage. Yes, we are saved by faith, but faith is actually not something that is passive. It's not just something you sit back and go, yes, I believe in God. I believe I'm saved by Jesus. Thanks. Faith is doing. Living by faith. We're living by faith. Faith is the kind of faith the Bible talks about always leads to action. James 2 and verse 26. As the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without deeds is dead. You can't just have faith because it follows through to do things. We are not saved by good works, but we are saved for good works. We need to act on these things. And just to be clear, just in passing, when the Bible says that you will be judged according by what you do, be very careful as that's explained and, and thought about. It's not talking about a judgment that determines whether or not we are going to be with Jesus Christ for the rest of our eternity. Because Christ has paid the price and we have... He is the way, and we've got there in that sense. But it is a judgment to determine the value of our contribution. You know the story of the, of the servants who had the, the talents. We talked about it not that long ago, so I won't go over it again. But it's that sense of what you do with what you have. Faith produces works. And when it comes down to it, the quality of our life is measured not by what we think or feel or say, neither is it measured by good intentions, it is measured by what we do. And you read through the scriptures, particularly the teachings of Jesus, and even Paul and so on in the New Testament, it's all about what are you doing, how are you acting, how are you getting on in life, how is your walk with Christ? Not a sit down with Christ. So to create a, a compelling future, we need to think it through. And I hope even this morning, in these few moments, you're starting to think it through about what it is that you're here for, what it is that God's gifted you in, and what is it that you're supposed to be doing. Think it through. And then start to go, okay, in order to achieve that, I'm going to raise the bar. I'm going to do better than I did last week. And once you've raised the bar, you've got to take some action. You've got to say, okay, now I've raised it, I've actually got to jump over it. I've got to achieve something. And we need to start doing that today. Because I know what happens. I, I do it myself at times. Yeah, that was a great message. I must do that sometime. And we go home on our Sunday lunch and sit down and doze in the afternoon. And Monday comes. I pray that God, as you read this passage again and again during this week, that you kind of think, okay, I've got to think through my life. I've got to think through where God wants me to be. And I'm going to have to raise the bar, not to just do the minimum. Not even to do what I'm doing if you think you're above the minimum. But kind of, I'm, I'm going to raise it up so I've got something to achieve. And then to take, take action on it. Today. Start it today. First day of a new week. Do you sometimes wonder what the future holds? Well, the best way to predict the future is to create it. The Bible makes that clear. We control this part of our life. 
and we harvest what we reap as a result of what we sow. That's the way then to thrive rather than just survive. 